Good afternoon, Music World. John here from What's Spinning, here tonight to chat about yet another album that is a major reason why I'm here right now, reviewing music on YouTube. Chatted about a few albums so far this week, like Nine Inch Nails, The Smiths, and David Bowie. Go back and check them out if you haven't already. But today, I'm mixing things up a bit and chatting about a true underground rap classic as I discuss Aesop Rock's classic Labor Days. If you don't know, Aesop Rock, Mr. Ian Babbitt's Long Island-based MC and a legend of the underground. And if you've watched this channel, you will know that my love and respect of Aesop Rock's music runs very, very deep between the off-kilter beats, the interesting production he's hopped on over the years, uh, just the whole, like, mythos behind the guy, as well as his legendary verbose lyrics that will have you diving into a dictionary, an encyclopedia, and probably an atlas, too. Uh, definitely going to need some work. You're going to want to read along with his lyrics listening to his music. Now, he has been at it since, you know, the mid to late 90s and put out quite a bit of material. But as of lately, since the Skeleton and Impossible Kid albums, Aesop Rock's music seems to be more out there in the open than ever. He's been very consistent lately, dropping new albums. He's dropped quite a few the last few years, whether it be his solo stuff, collaborations with Tobacco as Malibu Ken, also his uh, long return to form with his Garbology album alongside of Blockhead. The guy's been busy lately, uh, but for me, and it will always be this, uh, Labor Days is a creative peak in modern hip-hop that doesn't come around that much. As a matter of fact, uh, back in 2001, this album came out. I was about 11 years old, and when I was about 14, a couple of years later, uh, this was one of the first rap albums I ever bought. And to this day, it stands to me as one of the grimmest prophecies ever told in underground hip-hop, as well as just an incredibly influential album. This album starts off with Labor, one of my favorite Aesop Rock tracks ever, one of my favorite openings to an album ever between the This Is Labor and the beat coming in. It is just, oh, it amps me up every time. Moments later, it's gritty, it's wordy, it's a little hard to follow. Like I said, if you are new to Aesop's music, Music, get that lyric sheet ready. This track shows Aesop Rock really struggling to conform to society, refusing to do so. The stunning verbal display is awesome to watch, and Aesop's very agitated, pissed-off performance is legendary. Throw in a truly iconic beat from Blockhead, which there are many of on this album, you have a classic intro. Like, I love Aesop's performance on this track. He sounds fired up and fed up, and he's not always the most agitated, intense MC. But it paints an unbearably gritty, very real portrait of society, specifically working-class America. Daylight is up next, perennial cult favorite of mine, and one of the most loved Aesop Rock tracks ever. Now, this track is not as attached to this album's themes as other moments on here. This is kind of a hodgepodge of different thoughts from Aesop Rock about life and work general observations, but it's also oddly emotional. At times, it comes off as a cry for help. We also get some early insights into Aesop Rock's musical inspirations, as well as his artistic process. And I will say this, there are a few less quotable tracks from Aesop Rock than this right here. And that's not always the easiest thing to do with a track from him because things just often get very wordy and hard to follow. But this is uh, one of the closest things to an anthem Aesop Rock has ever done. It's really witty and really clever. I personally have always loved Save Yourself too. There's just another weirdo, off-kilter, make-your-mind-explode alternative hip-hop jam. I mean, the beats throughout this project sound so genuinely different, even by today's standards. And the lyrical performance from Aesop on this track is as poignant as ever, doing everything from calling himself Jabberwocky Superfly to begging modern MCs to save themselves for you save hip-hop because hip-hop doesn't need saving right now. It's so good. It's so full of weird detours, and I especially love the second portion of this track that shows Aesop Rock taking it up a register, a little bit more of an intense beat coming in, and him really taking off. Also, Flash Flood is one of the dreariest and most tragic tracks here. This is like an underground rap funeral dirge done by Aesop Rock. 
It's just so gloomy, and I love the samples here. It adds so much to Aesop's Rocks mythos already. I mean, throw in some freaking lyrics on top of that about conspiracy theories, and woof, you got a stew going. I love the bulky synth beat in Aesop Rocks' very quirky, weird performance here. And it's a very manic performance as well, and that final sort of chorus repeated mantra that we get here i mean it's the closest thing that you're going to get to a chorus from aesop rock because he's famously kind of steered clear from those it's really simple but incredibly effective uh speaking of which no regrets one of the most iconic tracks here this is a classic Aesop Rock observational cut as he, you know, tells the story of Lucy, a, you know, up-and-coming artist from her early days to her teen years to her midlife to uh, her final days. And here's the thing about Lucy. Lucy doesn't conform. Lucy does the way the things that she wants to do it. She has her vision and she will not step away from it. And honestly, while it does have, you know, a somber end, you know, it's actually a really empowering tale about following your dreams. I mean, the artistic process has always been something that Aesop Rock talks about at length, but this is one of his best examples of that. Add in some chilling production and a very whimsical beat from Blockhead, it is truly an iconic cut. I love One Brick too. this is obviously one of the grimmest tracks here. The beat slithers around on this track very slowly, it just comes off so sinister more often than not. I mean, Blockhead's beats throughout this whole project are not to be touched as far as I'm concerned. It all has this very mysterious, surreal vibe to it. Throw in another very cryptic, very surreal verse from Aesop Rock, you have a winner. I mean, lyrically, there is some wild shit on this track, man. I mean, I've always loved that line about beating a man to death with Aesop Rock bootleg CDs. And Illogic, his verse on this track, uh, it, it this is something that I don't get to talk about enough as as far as, you know, Aesop Rock's solo discography goes, I've always been unbelievably iffy on him bringing on guest verses, just because his music is so unique, and you have to be, like, really in the zone to kind of live up to the hype on a track like that, but Illogic on this track does just that. It's gritty and it's prophetic. It's really, really good. Also is the Tugboat Complex Part 3. And, you know, I should take a second here to kind of point out... This is not an album for everyone. This is not, you know, if you're a hip-hop head, you know, you're not absolutely going to adore this album no matter what. This is one that really takes patience. A lot of the beats and instrumentals here take time to reach their final form. And this is definitely one of the more complex tracks that you really need to sit with. However, I do think it's worth it. Now, the Tugboat Complex, in theory, Aesop Rock has said in interviews, is his kind of made-up term for somebody that just carries too much shit on their back and if you ever listen to his thoughts on it uh, there's actually you know a lot of interesting stuff in there yes this track takes some time to get to the point where it's going but it is worth it it's actually a pretty stunning statement i have a lot of the same feelings on coma even if you know these later tracks you you need to turn your brain on a little bit for that's okay though it's got a great groove. I love Aesop Rock's continuously outsider lyrics. He sounds so laser focused here. And Battery, to me, is an all timer. I love the sleazy, sort of just, I don't know, dangerous sounding beat that we get once again. Aesop's verse here is incredibly visual. It shows him asking himself questions and answering them himself. It once again also dives very deep into passion, artistic drive, getting through life no matter what. And that comes with a truly immense amount of quotable lyrics, whether it be his statement about how he painted a sunny day on the inside of his eyelids, or how about the homeless man and his horn. It's just so mysterious and surreal and does not let you go. Boombox, on the other hand, is one of the most alarming and urgent tracks here. Don't get me wrong, instrumental and production-wise is still, you know, fairly off-kilter and laid-back and definitely weird, but Ace, he sounds agitated once again. Most importantly, dangerous. And once again, while this chorus isn't anthemic or big or boisterous, uh, it honestly becomes sort of like this really infectious mantra that's really hypnotizing. Now, Bent Light featuring C. Ray's Walls. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This is easily my least favorite track here. Outside of the lyrics on this track, which are pretty much business as usual, everything else about this track really flops. 
Uh, the production is not that special. The beat is easily one of the most forgettable here. And Aesop Brock doesn't bring his A-game. And C. Ray's walls, uh, honest to God, like, this is the main reason that I've always been so iffy uh, with Aesop Rock bringing on guests on his albums. This guy sounded half asleep. It's just very safe, especially for an album that is anything but. But Aesop Rock brings the heat and drops three of this album's best tracks to finish it off, like the Yes and the Y'all. I have always loved this track. This is my Aesop Rock. This is him fired the hell up. This beat is heavy and gritty and pretty bombastic. It goes into uh, refusing to conform, especially into religion, especially blindly. It's one of the most grittiest moments here, but it's just as enthralling. The 9 to Fiver's anthem, this may be the most direct that Aesop Rock will ever get with us. It's mostly a critique of capitalism and, you know, work laws underneath capitalism. All done in Aesop Rock's very classic, true-to-form style. Get your dictionary. It's also just a really sharp critique, and the very wordy mantra of a chorus really sticks with me every time. And Shovel, in a lot of ways, uh, is perfect for a finale here. I mean, this beat is really gloomy, but it does have this sense of finality to it. It's pretty epic in its own way. And Aesop Rock on Shovel just sounds absolutely freaking exhausted, which he should be at this point. It's a brilliant barrage of thought-provoking lyrics and samples that you just won't hear anymore, and it is a true underground classic. I mean, around the time that this came out, I was very into... Cannibal Ox, Mo's Death, you know, mostly artists in that vein. But, you know, picking this thing up gave me an appreciation for underground and alternative hip hop, and that never went away. And that, for me, is something truly special. It's one of my favorite rap records ever. It is a true classic in my book, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.